welcome to the beer review of me, Jake. So today we have a bottle of beer from Marston's, believe it or not, in this very sexy looking box. And that's what grabbed my eye, to be honest, because I frequented my local Waitrose, perusing the beer aisle. And this, this stood out. Four pounds it was. It is a 7.4% oak-aged, bottle-conditioned IPA. Limited edition. It says on the bottom there, best before June 2020. And it is called Number One Horning Glow Street. And it's an anniversary series of beer. I don't know too much about it. I just thought I'd try it. It looks odd. I thought we'd give it a damn good go. <coughs> so what does the spiel say on here? Horning Glow Street is a series of limited edition beers from Marston's Brewery, aptly named after our original brewery site in Burton-upon-Trent, where it all started exclusively fermented in our unique Burton Union set of 24 oak barrels every barrel overseen by one of our skilled master brewers. Each one of these bottle conditioned beers will be individually numbered and will continue to mature until you enjoy it. Brewed and bottled in Beer Town, Burton upon Trent, the spiritual home of brewing capital in the UK. Number one, Horn and Glow Street pays homage to the beer style developed in Burton and exported to the rest of the world, a traditional British IPA. Pale ale brewing colour has 7.4% ABV. Number one is brewed with a low colour pale ale malt, late and dry hopped with a combination of four hop varieties, doesn't say what for. Fermentation takes place in one of the Burton Union sets of 24 oak barrels. Cold conditioning for three days locks the hop flavours and subtle aromas into the beer. The beer delivers a sweet honey aroma with hints of apricot and crisp citrus notes on the palate. So, okay. Bloody hell. They're really going to town on the spiel. I'm not going to read it all out, I just wasted loads of time reading that bloody box out. It is comprehensive. Okay, here, so the four hot fries, a Sovereign, Ernest, Goldings and Cascade. So some very traditional UK hops and some Cascade chucked in. So I think it goes on a bit about here, the Burton Union system, which not many breweries use. I mean, I think Marston's is the only sort of big UK brewery to still use that system. Interesting. And I mean, it, this beer was only four pounds and they've really gone all out sort of packaging wise anyway. The perfect store and pour. Oh, we still bottle cap up. Mm, still away from direct sunlight. Oh, okay, see so if you can get sucked into that. Interesting stuff. Well, oh, she knows. My bottle is number 1,000, uh, sorry, 12,326. So not that limited. The Burton Union system of brewing is, is interesting, so I'm not going to get into it here because one, I don't know enough. I know that it's sort of different sort of vessels that all sort of feed into one and you can get different bits and blend it all in to make consistent beer. But nowadays, modern brewing process, you don't particularly need to do that anymore. Um, but Marston still do for some of their beers. Anyway, let's get on with this. Because it's been a lot of waffle. Heck of a lot of waffle. We have quite a pin bright golden coloured beer. Nice layer of thin white bubbles on the top. Go for a sniff. <laughs> Uber traditional. It has that British ale smell to it. It's not just like sort of sweet, got that like slight honey note to it. There's something quite earthy in there. It's not a bad smelling beer. It's not particularly punchy. It's quite sort of doughy. It does smell quite boozy. It is only, I say only 7.4, but for Marston's, that's a, that's a big beer. And it does actually smell quite boozy. It's got something a bit Belgian-esque about it. Mm, let's go for a taste. Cheers. Hmm. It's one of those beers. For all of its sort of like pomp and circumstance, with all the sort of this fancy label on the inside and the, the nice box, nice packaging. It just lacks any sort of punch. That sort of alcohol and the aroma. There's there's nothing like that on the on the flavour. 
maybe a bit when it's sort of like you start breathing it in and out a little bit. It's just completely inoffensive. Sort of British IPA. There was a burnt toffee character to it. Again, honey. There was a bready quality to it. Yeah, it's one of those beers where... Where I'll drink it. And then, I'll, then I won't sort of think about it ever again. Which is a shame, because it's sort of... It's got all the right spiel, but it just doesn't quite deliver. I'm not particularly getting any, any oak barrel. And everything is on the nose for me more than more than the flavour. Yeah, I'm not quite sure just where this beer sits. Obviously, it's a commemorative beer. They, I mean, it's not it's not refreshing, but it, yeah, it's it's sort of a, it's not that dry either. It's a, it is a strange beer. I just don't quite know where where it sits or what it's trying to do. Maybe as I get down to the bottom, it says it's bottle conditioned. You might get some sort of more yeasty vibes to it. But it's sort of, if someone put that in front of you, said, what do you think of that? Tell me what it is. You'd just say sort of like British golden ale. Like I said, it's not actually bad. It's just it's just a bit of a damp squib, a bit of a letdown. So if you want to try it for yourself, you can do four quid in Waitrose, I've got that for. I wouldn't be picking up another one. I'm interested to see, I think this might be sort of like a series. So I'd be interested to see what other sort of beer releases that, that they do. I would definitely try them. They're intriguing. you got to give them that. But it's a bit of style over substance on this one. So that was everything from Marston's limited edition number one Horninglow Street bottle conditioned IPA. I've been Jake. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh, cheers.